again and welcome back to the plaster cast printmaking series. We are following on from the last workshops which um, I was exploring the little sort of relief moulds and the tiny tester samples using you know, lino, monoprint, dry point, that, those sort of things to give texture and to give relief surface and also to give a print within the plaster cast which we poured on top. What we're going to do now is I've got in front of me a back with a silicon cake mould, so a 20 centimetre square one, and I've got various other selections of printmaking oddments around me. I've got lino, um, some off cuts of lino, dry point card. If you're unsure about what paper dry point card is, please do look back at the washer and press um, videos early on and you'll see me using using that. And I've got some textures here. As I said, cardboards, um, corrugated card. This is it's, it's, it's cross stitch fabric. I don't I don't know what the technical term is apart from cross stitch fabric. <laughs> um, so it's a collagraph surface, and we're going to be building a more sort of composed image within the within the silicon mold, pouring plaster on top, and creating a relief plaster cast print. We're going to do this because it's going to be quite a, a long process. There's going to be a series of a few sort of time lapse or sped up videos within the main video, mainly because you will have seen me do things like mixing the plaster. You'll have seen me inking up the dry point card all in previous videos, so that's not necessary. What we're focusing on is how to build up the the plaster cast. Now, obviously, when you're working with plaster cast, what you start to layer up coming towards you is actually in reverse in the relief. So for instance, now, this is where I'm going to start constructing, I am going to start placing, just to give me an idea, nothing's been inked yet, some dry point cards. These have textures on, they're scratched, um, they'll become more clear as I ink them. This one's got an etching needle, this one's just been scratched into. And the shiny side is obviously facing up, because it's the shiny side that will be having the ink. And I'm beginning to layer these on top of each other. I also know in the background I want these and this big one to say crumpled it up if I can catch the lighting there there you go you can see it's just a piece of dry point card that I have scrunched up and that will give a really nice effect when inking again all the information on dry paper paper dry point card or paper dry point plastic is in past videos. So these things are going onto the base of my mould. As I say, this is just, I haven't inked anything, it's just, just to get my head round the layering of the relief surface of plaster cast. Now if I'm now to place, you must, some of you might recognise this little figure from my live printmaking for fun sessions on Instagram. Um, she's a little lino cut. She's already got black ink on her because she's been used previously, but the ink is actually dry. It's, it helps though in the video. Now at the moment, if I were to, um, at the moment the liner cut figure is obviously the first thing I'm seeing, and then behind that is the dry point card. When you pour plaster on, it's actually the opposite. So the dry point card will be the thing that is raised up nearest the surface of the plaster, and then next, further back into the relief, will be the figure. And then further back, if I'm to build it even more, are going to be these figures, or these little sections, which are cut up scraps of lino. We've got some mushrooms here, chanterelle mushrooms and twigs. There we go. So that is my general, what I'm going to be generally doing, as in my layout. Everything is going to be monochrome. We're going to be looking at colour later on, so this is all black. You'll notice in her little hands, this is why I've brought in the cross stitch fabric. It will hopefully give an interesting texture on the dry point. Again, we'll just roll ink over the top surface. And I am going to be using the corrugated card, and that will come up in, in the inking surface. Now what's really important when you think of plaster, it's a liquid. So at the moment I've got quite a large gap, for instance, where I've crumpled up the fabric and the liner underneath. Now the the when I pour the plaster on top, it will want to seep underneath in this gap, which may cause my little liner blah, 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 to float to the top. There are various tricks we can help to stop that, which I will go into. So don't worry, don't worry about it too much, but just be aware. 
Now you can obviously also flatten everything down which also helps a lot. But sometimes it's quite nice to have those large gaps and I quite like the fact you end up with quite a sort of structural and sculptural plaster cast. So now I've got a kind of layout, what I'm going to be doing is inking everything up. So take everything out. I'm now going to actually just clump everything together. I've got my lino cuts there. My little, little hands over there. <laughs> and my dry points will clump together over here. So I don't need my mould, I can disappear off. Now the ink I tend to use is um, Hawthorne Printmakers Stay Open Black. I found, it's an oil based ink and I found actually the Hawthorne variety works really well with the plaster casts. Water based inks will not work, they will, um, <laughs> they will obviously mix with the water in the plaster cast. So you'll end up with black ink everywhere. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to ink up one of the linos, ink up one of the dry points, just to all sort of remind you how it's done. Quite, it's been quite cold here so the ink is it's a little stiff, it's just working it a bit. And I tend to, for the plaster cast, I tend to make my ink on my relief surfaces, that would be the lino, marginally thicker than I would if I was printing onto paper. This ink has no dryers in it, it's just straight up oil based ink. So as I say I'm just going to be inking one, um, sorry she's had a bit of dust on her face, one of the liner cuts and one of the dry points and then we'll, um, I'll do the rest in a sped up film otherwise you'll be here for hours. <laughs> and what I'll also do because I've shown you how to mix the plaster and all the safety measures included in that in previous videos that will also be on a time-lapse film and I'll come back at the end when we do the grand reveal, so to speak. So it's a real nice glossy layer. <coughs> Sorry, it's not cold in my throat though. <coughs> Excuse me. Real nice glossy layer of ink. Just noticed a bit down there it's not picking up as I was doing that, so I'm just going to make sure I get that. And obviously with liner cuts and any relief surfaces, the ink, the plaster will sit beautifully into those ridges of your cutting. Now the bit I'm going to ink up, dry point wise, is one of these little scratch surfaces. This is a scratch with an etching needle. I'm using the same ink. Now the only thing with dry point I would say is if you do use dry point card for this technique, leave more ink on and you'll see how much I leave on because the, the plaster is sensitive to it but it needs that extra little bit of help. Now as we went through the testers, the dry point card's quite fun because you can leave ink on the surface, sorry, you can leave sort of ink in textual forms on the surface to give an effect and that's exactly what we're going to be doing here. I'm actually using my card, my scraping card, to create a lovely scraped surface, kind of emulating grass or some kind of textural background is what I'm going for. There we go. Gets so sticky this stuff. And then I'm going to do a little wipe down at the top here, like that. And that's how I'm going to actually leave those, you can kind of see So I've left quite a lot of ink on. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to now um, do the rest of the dry point cards. So I've only got a few more to do. The rest of the lino. And these little fingers, I might, I'll just quickly show you now. The little sort of, I suppose you call them, gloves in the puppet. Literally, I am rolling over and I've got some ink on them. And that's for her little hands. There we go. The cardboard, what I'm thinking of doing is I'm thinking of inking it up and I'm going to press it, after I've inked up one of these dry points, I'm going to press it onto the dry point surface to give a monoprint effect. And this again is when we went over on the little tester sample, so there's nothing particularly new there. 
So I shall crack on with that and then you shall return in real life. <laughs> real life time. Whatever, what does real life time mean at the moment? Um, real life time shortly. Okay, so here we are back again, as you saw on the time lapse, and isn't time lapse amazing? Look, it's all clean, <laughs> in a splink of an eye. Um, anyway, poured the plaster on, it was quite a thick mix. That's why you saw me sort of sitting over here for stirring it for a while, I was waiting until it got quite almost set. And the reason being is, if you notice in the time lapse, because I had, if you remember me mentioning, had all those little bits that could risk floating up to the surface with the liquid plaster. I kind of blobbed the plaster onto those to start with and that basically just helped weigh them down because if I just literally poured the plaster on the pooling and effect of the plaster would just suddenly sort of go like that and lift all the little bits up so I very specifically blobbed plaster on my little sections with the aim of just weighing them down if you use lots of layers of dry point card or something sometimes you can but to put a little bit of double-sided tape or glue just between the layers to help stick them down because the dry point card is obviously very light and can risk floating. What I do find is if you've got a lot of ink on the back of your dry point card then it doesn't stick to the oil based ink so I tend to use the blobbing method. It's been sitting here I don't know, 20, yeah, 20 minutes and if I tap it with my fingernail there's still tiny little finger indents but if you can listen, I'll hold it up to the camera to listen It's kind of a, a dull sound, um, so it's not fully cured, obviously that takes several days, but it's certainly very sturdy, it's not going to crumble, and it's not going to crack. So I put my hand over the top, very similar to taking a cake out of course. Take it away, we don't need that anymore. And you can see the back. You see how the water has soaked through the back of the dry point card. So the dry point card can't be used again, because um, it's gone all soggy. And this way again gets quite inky. So now it's just a case of peeling away. Now the reason you don't want to leave the plaster to fully cure in its, in its case, because when, when you're doing this layering technique of different sort of, um, you know, dry point card liner and everything, you're peeling away layer by layer, and at, and some point, at some point you will need to dig into the plaster to get some of your layers off. And I will be doing that shortly. If you use, if you are, if you've let your plaster dry, and left it fully cured, the, the digging into the plaster becomes quite difficult because it chips away. Um, and it's easier to do it now at this sort of soft set stage. You can already, I mean that's quite beautiful alone, but you can already see some of the effects from the dry point. So I'm just going to keep peeling. So this should be, there's my, all my layers of my dry point off. And I've got a um, stumpy screwdriver here which will help me dig out. Actually there's an exposed bit there that's useful. Just take off that edge, obviously be careful doing that. It's going to be very gentle peeling off this lino, so I don't want it to crack the edge of the, um, the plaster. And you just need to be very careful. Sometimes running a little knife along it can also, in fact I'm going to do that because it's very delicate. So an old, old Stanley knife and um, scalpel, just taking that edge of plaster off so that the lino doesn't tear the edge and damage our print. There we go. As I say, I've cast my layering so it's very, you get a lovely relief. I, I really put, I like the depth and I like the fact some of it crumbles. That's my personal aesthetic. Obviously if you want a cleaner relief mould, just think about what, what layers you're putting in there and how to make sure they're nice and flat. So there's part of 
part of the lovely lady. Obviously the black ink is still incredibly, it's oil based, it is tacky, you know, so it will, <laughs> her lovely little hands, um, it will be wet, so just be careful when peeling things off that you don't smudge any of that ink. Tweezers, etching needles, anything like that is really useful. Now, I'm just going to put my knife away. So I'm now going in to get these mushrooms, which are somewhere in here. There we go. And get an edge. I'm kind of going to use my knife again. It's a bit like an archaeological dig. <laughs> but it's very satisfying. You, you never quite know. You kind of know, but you... It is fun to find out how it's going to turn out. Use any, t <laughs> you see I'm going in with a screwdriver just to help this mushroom, there we go. Oh, it's not a mushroom, this is the leaf. Uh -huh. I'm going to tip a bit off. There we go. It's out. Beautiful. Let's just carve this bit away. And the advantage of plaster, obviously when it's completely dry you can carve the thing if you really want um, actual carved marks as well excuse my hands overreaching the camera there you go just trying to get this chunk out here sometimes as well you kind of forget what you've done um so you have to kind of really discover it again a bit under there you see it there it is There we go. And there's a bit hidden under here. Yeah. So I'm just trying to get this last bit of liner out, which is... You see, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm quite ruthless with my plaster busts. Um, it's just my... I like the... I like the crumbly edge, I like the fact it's not on clean, crisp paper, which so much printmaking is. I like the fact it has a bit of character to it, very much. It's something I'm keen on, keen on exploring. There we go. If you can begin to see already going on the depth. It's beautiful, really, really fun. Almost there. Just got this one here. We're going to go in from the side because I can see that looks quite easy. Lovely. That came very nicely. And gosh, she looks like she's in a jungle. It's really exciting. Now, I think this blob here is actually going to, oh no, it's going to stay. I thought it was going to pull off. Ooh. I thought it was underneath the, the chanterelle mushrooms. <laughs> uh, oh, there we go, there's one chanterelle. Let's get the others. Perhaps she's a Scottish, Scottish little puppet in a pine wood somewhere. The chanterelle mushrooms. It's really satisfying as well for not being so precious about lino. It's always so, printmaking can be so tight and this is just like, ah. As you can see, mine's all... I love it. It's also wonderfully sort of structural and um, yeah, relief. Wonderful. I'm just going. What I'm going to do? Just going to go off camera and to a ventilated area and just lightly blow off some of that residual dust. You don't want to brush it because the ink is wet. What you can do when it's completely and utterly dry and the ink is dry, then brush it all off. Don't do it now because it will smudge the ink. But just for the camera, I'm just going to give it a light blow. plaster cast 
and it is absolutely beautiful. If I just bring that a bit closer to the camera and kind of tilt it, you can see the depth. Oop, before I slip it out of my hands, there we go. You see the depth it has. It's really quite magical. And very, very effective. And you can see the wonderful dry points, the crumpling along the top. Some really, really beautiful things going on. And that will obviously take about two days to fully cure and fully sort of do its thing. And then once that's done, you can actually work and start carving to smoothing some of these edges if you want, you know, scratching into more details more. You can also hand paint it with watercolours. Um, and so you might want to paint, for instance, I don't know, her dress or some of the leaves to add that contrast. And it's, yeah, it was really, really beautiful. And you can see really bold. Obviously not really additionable, as you can see by the pile of mess. But hey, you know, I'm all for unique prints. Hope you enjoyed that. Have fun. And yeah, it just, just go for it. Embrace the plaster cast and its crumbliness and its depth. Fantastic. And I shall be back, we'll be doing next colour. Colour plaster cast printing. Thank you so much.